Hello, star friends. You're watching Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird, and I'm here to introduce you to the sky's brightest star, Sirius, aka the dog star. This star has a special power over the human mind, and that's partly because it's so bright and partly because of its science, and it's also because Sirius played a cool role in the history of our understanding what's around us in space. So more about all that shortly, but first... Just a heads up to look for two planets, Venus and Saturn, tonight and tomorrow night. Um, new moon was yesterday, January 29th. That's when the moon was more or less between the Earth and Sun for this monthly orbit. So the moon rose and set with the Sun yesterday, and it crossed the sky with the Sun during the day. But now the moon has moved in its orbit around Earth, and by tonight and tomorrow night, January 30 and 31, you'll see the moon turn to the west after sunset near blazing Venus and much fainter golden Saturn. You'll also see them on Saturday evening, February 1st. So mark your calendars and now meet Sirius. This is a Hubble Space Telescope view of Sirius. And I love this image, partly because it shows the power of this star, the brightest star in our sky, Sirius. Have you ever been to a star party? That's where people stand around uh, outside looking through small telescopes. And when it's visible, beginners always want to turn a small scope on Sirius because it's just that irresistibly bright. But with a small telescope, telescope, there's really not much to see here. Sirius just looks like a blazing pinpoint of light. And really, Sirius isn't an intrinsically super powerful star. It appears bright to us mainly because it's nearby. It's only 8.6 light years away. But check this out. It turns out that the single point of light that we see as Sirius is really two stars. One is that big blazing ball that you see there, and the other one is that tiny dot in the lower left. The companion to Sirius is called Sirius B. It's the closest white dwarf star to our sun. More about that shortly, but first, here's how you can see Sirius for yourself. So no matter where you are on Earth tonight or in the coming weeks, you'll want to find this constellation first. The red arrow is pointing to Orion the Hunter, one of the most noticeable constellations in the sky. And from the Northern Hemisphere, you'll want to be looking south in the evening. From the Southern Hemisphere, though, you'll want to be looking closer to overhead. So why do we need Orion to find the brightest star in the sky? Most years we don't, but in January and February of 2025, Venus and Saturn aren't the only bright planets up there. Jupiter and Mars are up in the evening too, as shown on this chart. You can see Jupiter toward the top of the chart and red Mars is over to the left on the chart. So they're as bright as Sirius or brighter. They're as bright or brighter as the brightest star in the sky. Uh, and if they're near Sirius in the sky, you might mistake one for the other. You might not be sure which one you're looking at. But you can't mistake Sirius for anything else if you notice the relationship between Orion's belt and this star. The belt of Orion is made up of three very noticeable medium bright stars in a short, straight row. And Orion's belt always points to Sirius. So this image is from Earth Sky community member Sergei Timofevsky in California. It doesn't matter how Orion is situated with respect to your horizon. Um, those belt stars could be pointing down toward the horizon or they could be pointing sideways, uh, parallel to the horizon. So no matter where you are on Earth, or it doesn't matter what time of year you're looking, Orion's belt always points to Sirius. And that's very likely how Sirius came to be known as the dog star. So Sirius is the brightest star in Canis Major, which is the constellation of the greater dog. And in this old drawing, Sirius is depicted as the tip of the dog's nose. 
But Sirius isn't the only dog star. There's also a lesser dog, the constellation Canis Minor, and you can see it on the top left of this image. The brightest star in Canis Minor is the other dog star, which we call Procyon. And here they are again with the names of the stars marked. The name Procyon means before the dog. And Procyon has this name because from latitudes of uh, like those in Egypt, this star rises into view before dawn in late summer, just 20 minutes before Sirius. So Procyon, the little dog star, is said to herald the dog. Okay, so we have Egypt, uh, Orion the hunter, the dog star, and a herald for the dog star. But what's the big deal? Like, why does the dog star Sirius need a herald? And the big deal is this. In ancient Egypt, Sirius was associated with an Egyptian goddess called Sopdet, also identified with Isis and with the Greek goddess Sothis. Sopdet was a fertility goddess, and she was the personification of the star Sirius. And so you can see the star on top of her head here. And it all makes sense when you learn that Sirius is behind the sun in early summer. So we don't see it in early summer at all. But in late summer, it returns to our sky and it always rises shortly before the sun. It still does that today. And that's called the heliacal rising of Sirius from Helios or sun. So Sirius and the sun are near each other in the sky in late summer. And it used to happen uh, every year shortly before the river Nile in Egypt began to flood. And the Nile is dammed up now, but it still floods sometimes, as you see from this image from 2020, uh, but long ago, the annual flooding of the Nile was, I mean, even saying those words sounds magical to me. The flooding of the Nile was a vital event for ancient Egyptian civilization, and the floods left nutrient-rich silt on the riverbanks, and that enriched the soil for growing crops. So that was important. So the return to the morning sky before dawn each year of the star Sirius was a vital milestone of the year to the ancient Egyptians. It was a sign that the much needed Nile floods were just about to happen. And that legendary power and importance of Sirius has lingered until today. So have you ever heard anyone speak of the dog days of summer? That's about the heliacal rising of Sirius when Sirius is near the sunrise in late summer. And that's when Sirius and the sun cross the daytime sky together. And the early stargazers imagined that the double whammy of the dog star and the sun was what caused the hot weather. Brightest star, sun together crossing the sky caused the hot weather. So that's why we today still speak of the dog days of summer. Okay, so we're almost done, but I just wanted to mention some of the science of Sirius. And as I mentioned, Sirius has a companion, Sirius V, seen here in the lower left. This dog is also called the pup. The pup is much fainter than Sirius. So both of these stars are about 8.6 light years away. Uh, this is a Hubble image, but with a small telescope, it's really hard to see the pup in the glare of Sirius. And it was the German astronomer Frederick Bessel who first predicted its existence in 1844 based on a wobble in the motion of Sirius across the sky. So just 1844, that's not quite 200 years ago. Uh, and 20 years after that, the American telescope maker, Alvin Clark, became the first to see Sirius B visually. He did it while testing a new large telescope. And it turns out that Sirius B is a tiny, tiny, tiny star. It's smaller than the Earth. In fact, Sirius B, the pup, is the closest white dwarf to the Earth. It's an evolved star and a very compact star. And it's the type of star that our sun will become someday. 
So Sirius B is smaller than Earth, but it has a mass roughly equal to that of our sun. And nowadays, regular people with small telescopes do sometimes snag images of Sirius and its little companion. And this one is from Michael Teo in Malaysia. Michael is a member of EarthSky's community of photographers. Uh, and recent years have been great for catching an image of Sirius B because Sirius and its companion orbit each other about every 50 years. And so the two stars right now, this is an illustration of their mutual orbit. And you can see Sirius A over on the right side. And the arrow is pointing to the year 2025, uh, this year. And um, you can see that Sirius B is now about as far from Sirius A as these two stars ever get. So right around now, like these the past few years and continuing right around now, Sirius B is about as far from Sirius A as it ever gets. So there's lots of people out there right now taking pictures of uh, Sirius, trying to separate out that tiny little white dwarf, that tiny Sirius B or the pup from Sirius A. So I'll stop. Uh, there's a lot to say about this star, and I hope you'll go outside tonight or any night in the coming weeks and look for the three stars of Orion, Orion's belt, three stars in a short, straight row, very easy to see in the sky, and then use Orion's belt to find Sirius, the brightest star. Oh, and this is the last thing I promise. If you do see Sirius low in the sky, you'll see it twinkling like crazy in all these different colors. So this image is a time exposure from our friend Amanda Cross in the UK. And this is just one star, Sirius, uh, shining over time. And you can see that Amanda has caught all the different colors in Sirius. And we'll talk more about why stars do that in a future live stream. But for now, just know that Sirius is bright and it's especially noticeable when it's low in the sky. It's a great twinkler and it's a great flasher of different colors. So thanks for watching today. And please do be sure to hit share, like, and subscribe. Help us get to 50,000 subscribers. I'm Deborah Bird. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.